Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to this session. I'm really pleased to have a speech uh, against you for, uh, for this uh, session. Uh, this session is about Data Prep Kit, um, the comprehensive cloud native toolkit for uh, scalable data preparation in generation generative AI application. I hope you can have uh, really good information for this session about uh, data preparation in, for generation AI applica application. Okay, so, and I have posted the QR codes uh, which, uh, can, uh, which can guide you to the link to the data prep kit uh, or, uh, GitHub repository. So if you, have, if you are interested, then you can use this. Okay, so let me into, first let me introduce ourselves. I, my name is Daiki Tsuzuku, a software engineer in IBM. And we have another uh, speaker, Takuya Goto, a software engineer in IBM. We both worked in IBM as a software engineer to develop the software uh, application software, uh, software services in IBM. And and in addition to that, we also contribute to uh, open source uh, software. And in our, and today's session, I'd like to share the uh, I'd like to share about the open source software we have contributed, uh, Data Prep Kit, as I have mentioned in the title. Okay, this is agenda uh, today's agenda. First, let me talk about what data prep kit is. You can take for uh, you can take uh, why we want to use data prep kit and uh, where we should start from uh, of data prep kit. Then next, uh, let uh, let me let us go to the how does data prep kit work. This will uh, provide the implementation details of data prep kit, and I hope this will, will also this will be useful when you start customizing customizing all your own uh, components in data prep kit. And third one is demo. I like to show uh, some kind of uh, you know. Uh, demo of the uh, how to to illustrate how to use data prep kit and how easily you can use it and uh, and then after uh, uh, roughly speaking about what's next uh, data, data prep kit is looking forward for i will ha we will have a q uh, and a session okay that is today's agenda so let me go to the first part uh, what is data prep kit well, shortly speaking, data, uh, data prep kit is a tool kit, software toolkit for data preparation in generation AP, a generative AI application. Uh, for those who doesn't uh, doesn't uh, doesn't have experience on the data preparation, let me uh, briefly introduce what uh, what kind of scenario data preparation may involve. Okay, so okay, let's suppose I uh, I need to prepare a data for an awesome LLM. I am a data engineer. And I'm told to, I told by my manager to prepare data to create an awesome LLM, which will work really well for hardware description language using, using HDL code held in 4,000 GitHub repos. So, um, so since we have the uh, source data that can be used uh, to get the codes for the uh, HDL uh, hardware description languages, First, we, uh, as a data engineer, uh, we, I have to do is, what I have to do is data acquisition, getting the files from the repositories that I can use to uh, get the HDL codes. And after that, uh, you need to extract text uh, from that files. And also, uh, that is, and also you have to uh, split the text into a, uh, a small unit of pieces, like words or tokens. Uh, that is the tokenization means. And yes, since after uh, since with the uh, first step, data acquisition and tokenization, you will get the data uh, available in the in uh, creating the model. Uh, we we can use we can use a uh, go to the data model uh, tuning, but before that, we have to do another another 
things to do. Uh, data preparation and quality analysis. This, uh, this requires because uh, data is a lot, uh, uh, you, the data you can extract from the file has a lot of information. Not only the code, but also license header, also the footers, also the you know, comments that is written in the files. There are a lot of information in the files of the uh, code, uh, files that uh, has a code. So, uh, but we don't need all of them to, uh, uh, to create a large language model for code. Uh, we need a really, really important point. So we have to, ex uh, we have to identify which parts we should need to use, and also we need to extract it, and also we need to cleanse. And also, uh, the, the code you will get from that step may include a kind of a low quality uh, in, uh, data. I mean, uh, there is a difference in the quality of the code who is written by the expert or the beginners, like that. So you also you may also want to do some kind of uh, code analysis using some kind uh, by creating some abstract structured tree by using the uh, by using compiler and uh, check if that code is a uh, good to use uh, good to use as a training data of the large language model or not. Okay, so that kind of data preparation quality analysis steps is also required. And uh, after these steps, we could get the uh, really good quality uh, data sets that can be used for, the, uh, for training the code, a uh, large language model to generating some code or suggesting some testing code or uh, do some analysis against the code written by uh, someone else. Okay, so we have the data. Uh, we we have the data, and that is our job as a data engineer. After that, after we have created the data, we can pass that data to model engineer or AI engineer to so that they can start tuning and validation and uh, see if that uh, large language model can work well. If if that uh, steps is uh, if we, if we could do this, uh, we could. Have Meets the requirement, meets the required in the first uh, trial, then that is okay. But if there is, uh, the, if we have found some kind of use cases that cannot fit to the, uh, uh, fit to the models that we created in the uh, initial trial, uh, to the uh, sorry, uh, if if our model doesn't work, as if there is uh, some use cases that our model doesn't fit to the uh, to the requirements, then we need to uh, find another data that can cover that kind such kind of use cases that we missed, and it's, and and that means that we will start uh, start from data acquisition, tokenization, data preparation, quality analysis again, and again, again, again. So this kind of you know, uh, so data data preparation requires such kind of data acquisition and the data, uh, uh, manipulating data, and also uh, we have to do it many, many times. That is the data preparation we, uh, we, uh, we are talking about. Okay, so as, you, as I have explained, uh, model, uh, we, uh, every kind of uh, scenario that uh, involves a model, we start from data. You cannot start a model, you cannot get model just from model tuning. You have to you need the data to tune the model. So uh, data preparation is really important aspect of the uh, part of the uh, gen uh, generative AI application. Uh, according to the Gartner reports, 79% uh, uh, identify data preparation and generation as the most common strategic task performed by AI features. Uh, AI teams. So, uh, so everyone acknowledge that data preparation is really important things. And but uh, this is also this uh, I, uh, this also comes from my experience. But data preparation is not an easy task. Uh, at least thirty percent view data volume and complexity as one of the most challenging aspects of AI implementation. So, uh, so you know. This this means that uh, you cannot or you cannot expect expect that the data you can do you can finish a data preparation uh, easily. You cannot expe always expect that. But what kind of challenges we uh, you can find in data uh, preparation? Uh, let me uh, talk about that. Okay, so. Uh, in, from my experience, there is a three kind of challenges that data preparation have. Uh, first is 
First is data may have different characteristics depending on your scenario. Uh, let, uh, let's remember what I, what I explained in the, in the case of the, uh, creating the large language model for code. I talked about the uh, code file may include the headers, or comments, or, uh, any, uh, and also license information. Uh, they, this kind of information is also included in the code files, and you have to eliminate or pick up the important parts. You have to do it. And also, you need to do some kind of uh, analysis to, to, to uh, assess the quality of the code. That is the case of the large language model for code. But what if we are going to make a large language model for text? I mean, uh, text, uh, text means that can be extracted from the PDF file or business report or something like that. There is no, uh, there is no uh, code inside it. There is no comment inside it. There is no uh, license information inside it. And also, you don't have have to do a kind of a code analysis, but you have to treat uh, you have to uh, treat the uh, PDF file as a binary data, and also you have to uh, get some. Uh, you you may have to do some kind of OCR stuff to extract in text from the embedded images. So uh, just uh, for so you can see that uh, just by uh, comparison of the code and language, there is a different scenarios we have to uh, realize in uh, realize in uh, for data preparation. So that is the one thing. And second thing is that you cannot manually validate the large data. As I explained uh, in the earlier step, there is a 4,000 GitHub repository just for the hardware description languages. And, and it's each repository may hold uh, 100 or 200 files, and each file may have uh, uh, 400 or 1,000 or co uh, lines. So you can do math, so there is a lot of text inside it. So there is a large volume of data, and you have to check the if there is any duplication or if there is any uh, not, uh, not non-related text inside it. Uh, but you can do it manually because it is very large. Third thing is the iterated cycle of data prep makes it cumbersome, uh, time consuming, and tiring. So as I explained in the scenario, uh, uh, you need to do, you need to uh, retry, uh, you need to do, uh, you, you need to repeat the data acquisition and data preparation again and again. If if your data set couldn't create the model that uh, meets the requirements. And also, you will see the, uh, many kind of runtime ever during the data preparation. So you need to do it many, many times. So that is, uh, you know, very tiring and uh, and time-consuming parts. So these are the data preparation challenges. Okay, how we can solve this? Uh, from my experience, uh, there, at least we need four kind of things. First is easy to use tool. Uh, to uh, solve data challenges for various use cases and different data modalities, like you know, code and uh, differences in code and languages, or uh, the, the differences in the files that you have to tweet, uh, you have to uh, manage. I mean, the uh, code files or PDF files or anything like that. A second one is easy to customize tool. This is to adapt to unique use cases that cannot. Th this is for the really, really unique cases that uh, that your scenarios. I I mean, your use cases or your business requirements may have. This might be a, a specific to an enterprise domain or something like that. And okay, so another thing is to easy to scale to to solve data challenges at various scales. Since we have large da large data, we need to, and we, we don't have much time. Uh, we don't have much time to you know uh, uh, to tweet, uh, to handle them little by little. So we need to do it in a really large scale at once, so that we can get uh, our large language model in a, a, reali a realistic time. So we have to we have to do uh, we have to use some kind of easy to scale. To. Uh, and the last one is low code, no code automation uh, to deal with cumbersome, time consuming, tiring cycle of data prep. Uh, we cannot do every, uh, we cannot do the manual operation every time when we have to do the, uh, when we have to repeat uh, data acquisition and the data preparation again and again. We have to do it with some kind of the, by pressing the button and uh, uh, waiting for the result. We have to do it in such kind of manner. We cannot do it uh, every time in manual manual steps. So that's why Data Prep Kit uh, was introduced. First, uh, Data Prep Kit has uh, four characteristics or it, that it ties to the uh, solution I have talked about. First is, a con first is it contains data prep receipts uh, uh, 
recipes for code and language modalities aimed at various use cases, including fine tuning, work in structure tuning. This also means that you can ex you can use data prep kit to take extra text from the PDF files and the code files. I mean the GitHub repository, uh, GitHub repositories, and also that you can do some. You, it uh, it includes uh, it, it it includes a pre-built mo module that can be used to create. Uh, that can be used in the fine-tuning uh, scenario or large scenario. I mean, like creating the uh, uh, chunk, uh, text chunking or something like that. You, it is also it is already there. And second one is open and easy to customize to bring your own transform for your own use cases. So uh, since uh, a data paper kit is licensed under Apache two Apache Apache two point zero license, so it is open. Everyone can use and everyone can contribute. And also, and uh, it is easy to customize. I mean, you can bring your own trans uh, module uh, by uh, by following the frameworks uh, defined in the data prep kit. So it is easy to customize. Third one is flexible computing that works from laptop to cluster scale to deal with large volume of data. As you can see in the bottom of the diagram in the uh, left hand side, you can see the uh, way as uh, the icon, the way and the spark. This means that the data prep kit can easily integrate with such kind of distributed computing framework. So we can use a weekend scale, uh, scale you. Uh, you can you can do the data preparation task in a large uh, in a large scale by using uh, by running on the way and way cl cluster or spark cluster and the last one is be able to automate in no code manner with kubeflow uh, you, also you can see the uh, kubeflow icon in the bottom of the diagram this means that since kubeflow uh, once we create the pipeline of the kubeflow uh, and we register the we uh, definition of the pipeline of the query flow that using the this uh, data prep kit uh uh, data prep kit modules, then you can all you have to do is to register that configuration as uh, uh, to Kubeflow and create a pipeline and press the button to run the Kubeflow uh, pipeline. So this will makes the uh, this will this will makes such uh, this will makes you know uh, uh, you know uh, this will reduce uh, reduce uh, you know uh, learning cost uh, no uh, running cost of how how to repeatedly. Uh, one data acquisition and data preparation. So this, by these kind of four characteristics, I believe that the data prep kit can address uh, data prep preparation challenges. So this is uh, this is why I wanted to share uh, data prep kit today. Okay. So before so uh, before uh, talking about the uh, details. Uh, details of data, data prep kit. Let me uh, share the entry point of your journey with data prep kit. Uh, so uh, we. I recommend you to start from the previous transforms that we have provided uh, in, and we have uh, shared in the data prep kit uh, GitHub repository. There is the uh, modules for the uh, data ingestion and also the module for the uh, some kind of data preparation task required for both code and language modality, but also uh, and also the, the modules. Uh, specific to uh, language uh, uh, language modalities and also for the code modalities, and we believe that these kind of modules can cover the standard uh, uh, scenarios that you ha that users have to do when they have to do some kind of data preparation task in uh, for generate generative AI application. So I recommend you to start from these kind of modules, and. So and also I I will, I will share the demo about this uh, later. But before they go into the demo, uh, it will be better to have uh, uh, implementation details. So Taku, it's your turn. Uh, thank you, Daiki. Hello, uh, I'm Takuya. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about the uh, data prep kit in details, and I focus on the uh, how data prep kit works. Let's start. In data prep kit, uh, we call the modules to act as the tr data processing functions transforms. In uh, transforms have uh, three important roles: ingest, annotate, and filter. For example, uh, ingest transforms uh, will uh, load the raw data from the data stores and extract the uh, in required information and uh, stored into the uh, data stores in structured format so that the other transforms can process their data. And annotated transforms uh, will uh, 
uh, detect additional information or uh, evaluate the contents of the data and add the results to the each record, uh, such as uh, identified languages and uh, or scores of the source codes. And uh, uh, the filter transforms uh, will uh, eliminate or uh, remove the uh, or mask the data uh, such as uh, that that have a negative impact to training LLMs, such as the uh, duplicated records, uh, records including the negative expressions or uh, low quality of source codes. Uh, data prep kit uh, uses the packet uh, as a, a structured format, and uh, by preparing the customizable data access components. Uh, Data prep kit supports various data source types, uh, LF, LFS, network file systems, and S3 compatible data sources, uh, and so on. And uh, data prep kit uh, handles the packet files uh, using the Apache Arrow. And for runtimes, uh, data prep kit supports pure Python, and uh, ray based runtime, and Spark runtime. And uh, the uh, lab-based implementation uh, can make easy uh, can make uh, automation easily using the curve flow. Uh, let's move on to the how data prep kit works, uh, introducing the uh, programming components. Data prep kit have has uh, three uh, component groups: uh, data access components, runtime components, and transform components. Uh, first, uh, data prep kit uh, transformer launcher receives a transform runtime configuration uh, defined by users. And uh, uh, transform launcher uh, creates the transform orchestrator and pass, passes the, to the transform runtime configuration to the transform orchestrator. The transform orchestrator uh, passes the transform runtime configurations and split into the transform conf configuration and the transform runtime. And if uh, at this stage, uh, the, tr the transform requires uh, transform shared components, uh, the transform orchestrator creates the data access instance uh, through the data access factory and prepares uh, the transform shared components for runtime. In the next stage, uh, Transform Orchestrator creates the uh, transformation workers uh, with the file processor. And the uh, uh, Transform Orchestrator copies the data access factory and the transform configuration to each uh, worker. The file processor creates the uh, data access uh, using the copy the access fact data access factory. In the end, uh, the file processor creates the transform instances uh, using the uh, transform configuration. And the transform, transform instance uh, will process the data uh, using the data access instance and uh, transform shared components. In the previous slide, uh, I told you uh, that there are three important roles uh, in, for transforms. And uh, we prepared uh, pre-built uh, tra pre transforms uh, for each role. However, uh, uh, somebody in here, or uh, most of you, uh, want to create your custom uh, transforms and use it uh, trans your, your trans data preprocessing. And don't worry, uh, the transforms are customizable. So you can uh, bring your own transforms into the data prep kit. Uh, now I'm going to show you the how to bring your own transforms. The steps are very simple. There are only three steps. Step one, uh, prepare your own transform. Step two, uh, prepare the transform configuration. And the step three, uh, prepare your runtime transform configuration. Uh, let's see them uh, step by step. In the step one, uh, we prepared uh, a abstract class, uh, abstract table transform class uh, for customization. 
So you can create uh, the, your custom transform class uh, ext by extending the abstract table transform class. And you need to uh, override, override uh, the initializer and the transform uh, function in your transform, uh, custom transform class. In the step two, uh, we prepare the transform configuration class uh, for general configurations. So you can create the uh, transform con custom transform configuration class by extending this class and uh, overriding the, uh, these two functions, uh, the input params and the apply input params. In the step three, uh, this is the last step. Uh, you are going to uh, select the uh, runtime which you want to use, and you uh, create the uh, you create the custom runtime transform configuration uh, according to your choice. And uh, for run uh, Python runtime, uh, Python runtime transform configuration for lay based runtime, uh, lay runtime transform configuration. Uh, for Spark runtime, uh, Spark runtime transform configuration class uh, we prepared. So you can create the custom transform, runtime transform configuration class uh, using these general classes. And you need to uh, uh, refer the custom transform configuration in the initializer uh, of your uh, runtime transform configuration. As you can see, uh, you don't need to uh, implement this runtime specific uh, transformation to bring your trans own transform. Uh, see, uh, feeling like you can create the, your custom transform. Of course, we are welcome to you uh, contrib to contribute to the, our uh, data prep kit project and add your unique uh, transform. That's all uh, my part. Uh, thank you. Back to Daiki. Thank you, Takuya. Okay, so now time's for demo. Uh, okay, so to, for the demo, let me go to, uh, let me get out of the slide and let me share the video. Sorry, I, I wanted to share the uh, live demo, but uh, since the time is really limited, I like to share with this uh, way. Okay. Okay, can you see? Can you see? Okay. Okay, so this is a, you know, a data prep kit repository. Uh, you can see in the GitHub. And today I wanted to show is a, a, a tutorial that is, you can see in the example notebooks directory. It is an introduction for the data prep kit. This time, the, it, this demo will cover about the one typical scenario that one they, that one want to use data prep kit. It will first ex, uh, it, it includes several steps. First, uh, extracting text from the PDF, and after extracting text, the second, uh, split into chunks because you know uh, uh, to to make the size of the text uh, uh, smaller. And after chunking, you will assign uh, some kind of document ID, and then you will do uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the application because uh, for data. Uh, data you will, you acquired may have a kind of deprecation. Like, for example, if uh, if we're using the forked, uh, forked GitHub repository, that uh, repository may contain the uh, duplicated contents uh, of the, you know, original one. Such kind of things may happen. So we need a deduplication. And also, there is also the file that has a contents we uh, close that is not exactly same, but has the same meanings or same kind of pattern inside it. So we will do another data application, fuzzy data, I call uh, for uh, data application. With two, two kinds of data application, uh, a deduplication, uh, the, you will have the, you know, um, uh, you know the data with a unique uh, unique text. So after that, you can vectorize it that text into the embedding vectors, which is also the pattern that you will want, uh, you will have to process if, if we want to create some kind of VAG application. So I suppose I, I hope this uh, in, uh, this scenario can uh, be a really good information for your journey to the generative AI application. Okay, so this is a you know a col a collab notebook that we can we share in the uh, you can access from the uh, GitHub repositories. 
Okay, and we will use the two PDF files today. And one is about the uh, one is about the yeah, includes the information about the Earth, and another one is includes the information about the Mars. Okay, it's really simple, but uh, this is just an example. So, okay, so okay, so first. Okay, so first things is to uh, set up the CoLab environment. Uh, we, we will do several uh, steps that is included in the CoLab notebook, and you will see the dependencies is all included, and the environment is ready. So after we starting the runtime, we will start using the uh, data prep kit. Okay, so this is the first part. Uh, this one is about the, you know, uh, Oh, no, no, this is also the uh, preparation of the uh, collab environment, sorry. Okay, doing some, and also uh, also setting up the local file system or the collab, uh, collab notebook, we are ready to start our uh, transforms. Okay, so, so the first one is to extract PDF, uh, extract text from the PDF. We have the built-in modules called PDF2 packet for this. Since we have already downloaded the PDF file in the local file to the local file system with a collab environment, you can use it. You can access them locally. And after importing the required depend uh, modules and setting the configuration and passing that configuration to the launcher and launch uh, start launching the launcher, you will see that the data prep kit start pre -pass, uh, processing the uh, uh, PDF files like this. And it is it is one in the local uh, local way cluster uh, it's served uh, served in this collab environment, and yes, it finished. And as you can see, you can see the contents is uh, contents of the PDF uh, PDF is extracted in the JSON JSON format, and you can check uh, by checking the rec uh, record of the uh, record of the output. Uh, Output, you can see the extracted text and the extracted document structure uh, uh, of the PDF we are targeting. And you can see that our solar system is uh, this kind of text and which is also in, uh, included in the original PDF file. This means that we can, uh, Data Web Kit successfully extracted the text from the PDF file. And after that, we will change that output, uh, change the output of the PDF2 packet uh, module to the, uh, uh, the next uh, next transform, doc chunks. Doc chunks means that chunking the text into uh, small pieces. And uh, we will have, all, all we have to do is the same things: uh, import dependent, uh, import modules, uh, configure uh, configure as you want, and pass that configuration to the launcher and launch. This will, uh, this is the pattern of the. Uh, uh, pardon to consume the data prep kit uh, library. And you can see that the PDF, uh, we could extract the several techies from the uh, single PDF files. It, like Earth PDF, uh, uh, we could extract four techies from the Earth PDF and also uh, four techies from the Mars PDF. So doc chunking is actually working well. And also, you can see that the text extracted, uh, ex, uh, text in the output of the doc chunk also exists in the original PDF file. Okay, since since we have a little time, so let me skip. Okay. Let me skip the document uh, generating document ID, and you can see. Uh, let's go to the exact data, uh, exact data application, and. Uh, this is the same things, the conf uh, setting configuration and passing to the launcher and launch that launcher. And yes, as you can see, uh, there is only three records for the mass PDF. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was too quickly, but uh, 
originally, after the doc, ch doc chunking, there was four records for the, uh, from the mouse uh, PDF. But in this example, you can see, uh, after, after pro processing with exact data, you can see that only the uh, three records in the mouse PDF. And, there, and, and you, can see, you can see that uh, what, uh, what is uh, dropped in the uh, notebook shared in the GitHub repository, but uh, it, is, uh, it is actually, uh, actually uh, drops the contents exactly uh, matches to the ones that in the Earth PDF. So that, that is how the duplication is worked, working. Okay. So sorry, uh, since we don't have a time, uh, we, let me skip to uh, um, Okay, so like this, we can uh, we can change uh, the output. Uh, we can pass the input input to the transform and get the output from the transforms, and we will pass that output as the input of the next transforms, and then we will get uh, the output to so that we and we can pass that uh, output as an input. We can do this in the same manner. Okay, so that is a kind of thing that we can do in the data pip kit, and you can see that uh, finally we could get the embedding vectors from the, each of the text we have get from the PDF file. So that is the demo. Okay, so and let's. Okay, so I, I perhaps we don't have the time for the Q and A session, but uh, let me share that what kind of things. Uh, oops, what kinds of things we are expecting as a next for the data prep kit? Okay. Um, okay, so. So, uh, so we are expecting three things. Uh, we want to make uh, data prep kit easier for first-time users to try the pre-built modules. We want to add uh, another uh, notebooks uh, to, so that you can get the idea of how to use the pre-built modules. And also, we want to add more and more pre-built modules so that uh, everyone can easy to start data preparation. Second thing is making it easier for users to add their own modules so that customization can be uh, uh, customization uh, of the each user can do done easily, uh, so for their unique scenarios. And another, and the last thing is adding more use cases like the work example that that is also I shared in the previous demo. And yes, we want that. Uh, we and also uh, I, this is an open source tool, so we want the user. Uh, we recommend you to add their own use cases so that uh, you can uh, so that everyone can uh, ha uh, can be helped by your uh, use cases, and also uh, you can be helped by uh, other, uh, any other one's uh, use cases. We want that kind of uh, uh, mutual uh, help. Uh, we are expecting such kind of mutual help as an open source and. We believe in the, op the power of the open source community. Open source community accelerates data preparation for large language models, which is really tiring and also uh, time consuming. Cabals. We believe that uh, by the power of everyone, we could make this uh, uh, challenging task more uh, easier and also more faster so that we, uh, so every user can have the benefits of the generative AI applications. So that is all. I want to say for this uh, data prep kit session. Thank you. And do we have a time for the QA? Okay. Okay. So it seems we don't have a time, but uh, we too. Uh, 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 we too. We uh, in the in this uh, today's uh, summit. So uh, feel free to ask questions to us. Thank you for your uh, time.